So we talked about how the corresponding sides of similar polygons uh, are proportional to the other sides, you know, and they have that common ratio when you set them up as fractions. This also applies to the perimeter of the similar polygons. Uh, remember, perimeter is the length around a shape. So you're going to add up all the sides, uh, all the side lengths of a shape, and that's how you get your perimeter. Uh, so the ratios are the same when you uh, set up the ratio of the perimeter as the ratios of the side lengths. So if we have this shape here, um, we have KN on the left. It corresponds with PS. So KN over PS, those two go together. And then we have KL and uh, PQ. Those go together. And if you forget and don't have a picture to use, look at KL are the first two, PQ are the first two in our similarity statement. Just like how when we talked about congruent statements, we match up the corresponding parts. Then we can do LM and QR. And then finally, MN and RS. MN and RS. So we're going to verify this in the coordinate plane down here. So we're going to graph uh, these points, and then we're going to find the, the length of all the segments. But since our lines are going to be vertical and horizontal, we won't have to use a distance formula. We can just count and get our lengths uh, very easily. So k is 2 comma 4. There's k. L is 2 comma 10. M is 10 comma 10. And N is 10 comma 4. So here is our starting quadrilateral. Now PQRS um, is half um, the length of these coordinates. Now to get the coordinates of PQRS, we're going to multiply the coordinates that we already have by one half. So we're going to multiply um, two and four by one half, and we get one comma two. Um, one comma two. One comma two is right here, so that will be point P. So we're going to do this all the way down. And we're going to get our we're going to get our new points, and we're going to plot those. And I'll do, I'm going to do that in green. So one comma five. That's going to be Q. R is going to be uh, five comma five. There's R. And then S is going to be 5, 2. So this is our smaller uh, but similar quadrilateral. And we're not going to do the tracing paper part because it's hard to do that uh, on a tablet. So now down here, what we're going to do is we're going to find the lengths of each side. So KL, if I were just to count from K to L, it's one, two, three, four, five, six units. LM is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. Um, we don't need the distance formula because we, like I said, uh, our lines are vertical and horizontal, so we can just easily count. M to N is also six units, and KN is also eight units. Then we're going to do the same thing for uh, P. 
uh, the quadrilateral PQRS. So QP, PQ, that's three units. Uh, QR, one, two, three, that's four. RS is three units, and PS is also four. So you can kind of see already, like, each side is half the length of, you know, sorry, each side in green is half the length of its corresponding side in pink. So we're going to set that up uh, down here as well. You know, PQ, uh, PQ was three over KL was six. And that simplifies to one half. You know, QR was four over LM is eight. And that also simplifies to one half. So if we go through, like I just said, all of these sides, three over six, that's also one half. And PS over KN also simplifies to one half. Notice that the side length from the green uh, polygon or rectangle, quadrilateral, whatever you want to call it, is always on top. And the pink, uh, the value from the pink shape is on the bottom. Now we're going to calculate the perimeter. So I'm going to add up all of my green sides, 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4, that's 14 over 6 plus 8 plus 6 plus 8, which is 28. And that simplifies to 1 half as well. So we just have a bunch of 1 halves here. So in conclusion, if two polygons are similar, then the uh, ratio of their perimeters is equal to the ratio of their corresponding side lengths. Now, if we look at the next page, we can see uh, where this might be useful. So we need to find the perimeter of triangle WXY and in the diagram PQR is similar to W x y so what we need to do is first i wanted to identify the corresponding parts and then we're going to set up a ratio so what side corresponds with x w well x w or w x is the first two letters so p q are the first two letters here so these two correspond with each other so that means that it, those two numbers are going to go in the same fraction. So I'm going to take 40 over 72. And, you know, I get these numbers. These are the corresponding sides. Corresponding sides. That's what these are. This ratio, though, is equal to the same ratio of their perimeters. Well, we don't know the perimeter of triangle WXY, but we can calculate the perimeter of triangle PQR. We know all three sides of that triangle. So we can add up 72, 63, and 81. And when we do that, 72 plus 63 plus 81 is 216. So now we need to put that in our, in our, fra in our second fraction. But we have to remember, okay, where do we put that? Are we going to put that 216 on the top or on the bottom? Well, we got to look at the first fraction. The first fraction, we put 40 on top. We put the the information from that left triangle on the top. So that means the perimeter of that triangle has to be on the top of the other fraction. And since we don't know that, we're going to put X there. 
and since the information we got from the triangle on the right is on the bottom of the first fraction, that means information from that from that triangle on the right also has to be on the bottom of the uh, the right fraction. So this two sixteens got to go on the bottom, and then we will cross multiply, and we get seventy two x equals 8,640. And then we'll divide both sides by 72 and X equals 120. So, oh wait, I probably should, you know, this fraction per, uh, is the perimeters. That was on the fraction on the right. So we know that the perimeter of the left triangle is 120. We don't know the length of the other two sides. We just know that um, the perimeter is 120. Yes, you could solve for each of those other sides, but we're, that would pay, take a, a longer time and more work instead of just getting right to the point. All right, letter B says, assume the scale factor uh, between PQR and triangle WXY is three to four. Okay, so that means PQR came first, three came first. So three goes with PQR. And WXY came second and four came second. So WXY is four. The perimeter of PQR, and I wanna highlight that in the same color I have the other ones um, highlighted or underlined in is 84 find the perimeter. Okay, so for the first fraction, it doesn't matter which value you put on top, my pink one or my green one, as long as you are consistent. So if I put the pink one on top, three, and the green one on bottom, four, in the second fraction, I have to put my pink number on top, you know, the, the information that I'm getting from triangle PQR. So the perimeter is 84. We don't know the perimeter of triangle WXY or the green one. So it's going to be X. And then we'll cross multiply. And when we do that, we get 3X equals 336. Divide both sides by 3. X equals 112. Again, we don't know what any of the side lengths are in any of these triangles. We just know their ratio is three to four. Um, and now we know the perimeter of both of them. We don't know anything else about the, the side lengths. All right, let's look at example number two. Uh, a larger cement court is being poured for a basketball hoop in place of a smaller one. The court will be 20 by 25 feet long. Uh, the court was similar in shape, but only, uh, the old court was similar in shape, but only 16 feet wide. Find the scale factor of the new court and uh, to the old court. So let's collect the data. The, the new court will be 20 feet wide by 15 feet, or sorry, 25 feet long. The old court was only 16 feet wide. Oh, whoops, I've got that backwards. Um, 25 feet long. Then 16 feet wide. So write a proportion and solve for the missing uh, side length. So the way we wrote the information kind of makes it easy uh, to set up our proportion because it, we already have the information on top of one another. Okay. So I put both widths on the, on the left one, on the left fraction and the lengths on the right fraction. The new court was on top of the left fraction. So it must be on top of the fraction on the right side as well. Again, color coding makes this a little bit easier to place your information. So now I'm going to cross multiply 
and we get 20x equals 400. And then when we divide both sides by 20, x equals 20. So we can go back to our table and put 20. And then we can find the perimeters. And you could do it either way. You, you could um, use this formula here where you're going to um, add up all the lengths and then use proportions to get the perimeter of the, of the old court as well. So the new court, if we drew a picture, you know, and again, this picture is just a sketch to help me organize the information. The perimeter is gonna be 25 plus 20 plus 25 plus 20, which is 90 feet. So now I can use that to calculate the perimeter of the old court. And actually I probably should have this in red because I'm doing all of my new court stuff in red. So now when I use the proportion, I can use either one of these 20 over 16 or 25 over 20. Um, I'm going to use the 20 over 16. And that's going to equal, well, the perimeter of the new court is 90 over the perimeter of the old court, which we don't know. So then we cross multiply and we get 20x is equal to 1,440. And when we divide both sides by 20, x is equal to 72 feet. Now, could you have just said, oh, well, the old court is 16 by 20, and then, you know, drew a picture and did the same thing we did uh, for the new court? Yeah, we could, we could have done that. Um, either way is acceptable. Now, example three, uh, I want you to try this. So please pause the video, try it, and unpause it to see what answer I have uh, and how I set it up. Okay, so I got x equals 60, um, the perimeter of triangle SRT, not, not this x, like the, the perimeter of that triangle is 60. Uh, first, you had to find the perimeter of the smaller triangle, the one that I marked in green, by doing 12 plus 13 plus 5. And that's how I got 30. Then I set up my proportion and solved that. So what I, what I want you to do is really to pay attention and think about where you're placing your information in your two fractions or your proportion so that when you cross multiply, you're going to get the correct answer. So thank you for watching. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe.